center of um, soldiers from World War One, and they had the idea to send biographies of the soldiers to different songwriters and, uh, and have a song for each each one of them. And I don't know what the other songwriters got sent, but I was sent the biography of a very interesting guy. Uh, he was from Birmingham. His name was Frederick Broderick, and he volunteered in 1914. But he only lasted three months in the army uh, before they chucked him out. And he spent most of that time in prison for offences such as leaving his camp without permission, uh, using obscene language to a commanding officer, and drunkenness. So I immediately took to him. <laughs> and then uh, they told him he had a character entirely unsuited to soldiery. However, a couple of years later, I think the British Army was beginning to run out of characters that were suited to soldiery because they recruited him and um, conscripted him. And after a brief training, he was sent to the front. And he distinguished himself in many attacks. Um, the irony of his story is eventually he was executed for, once again, uh, drunk, being drunk and leaving his camp without permission. Um, and. Uh, he was first of all condemned to death in 1917, and then they, was, they repealed that, and, and they said he could serve 10 years hard labor at the end of the war, and sent him back to the front. And uh, a few months later, he was found a bit incoherent on the road to Calais, and he was tried the next day uh, without a lawyer present, and shot the day afterwards. And so I was standing in front of his grave thinking, what the hell are we going right? And I'd just been playing a, a house concert in, in the north of Germany. In fact, I play lots of house concerts, if anyone's interested. Uh, I'm going to with Tom afterwards. Um, get that plug in. Anyway, this particular house concert, on top of the piano, there was an old mandolin covered in dust. Uh, not this one, although coincidentally this one is also um, from, it's from that period, it's from 1915. But this one belonged to this lady's grandfather's brother, and he died in World War I, German soldier, and he was only 17 years old, and nobody played the mandolin since. He played the last note on that mandolin. And as I was standing in front of Fred's grave, I, I thought I'd take the liberty to mix those two soldiers' stories together, of the two soldiers, the German soldier and, and the British soldier. And so I turned Fred into a mandolin player, which I think uh, would probably have um, um, uh, amused him hugely. And uh, in this song I referred to Lily May, that was his half-sister, and I was contacted recently by the grandson of Lily May, who is also a soldier. And uh, yeah, we had a, a little uh, conversation. This song's called The Unknown Soldier Has a Name, because if you ever go to these graveyards in Flanders, um, you'll see, it, apart from these immaculate white gravestones, there's sort of a big stone cross in the middle of each one, with a sword on it. Still trying to work that out. Um, and it says underneath, their name liveth, liveth evermore. And I, I wish that was true. Um, and of course, I don't know if anybody's even read all the names of the people that died in World War I. But they were all individuals, things, they had things they were good at, things they weren't good at, just like us, you know. They had mates, they had people that didn't like them, they had girlfriends and parents and kids. And this guy's name was Fred, and the song is called The Unknown Soldier Has a Name. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was fighting on the Western Front for most of 1917. And I kept a cool head under fire when we went through the wire. I'd been disciplined before, they said I had a bad character. But they needed more young men with guns for this war to be won. Thank you. 